Look at that sharp VGA picture. This bliss wallpaper is a bit overused, don't you think? How about this one? Red Moon Desert is an underrated wallpaper. Uh-oh. This laptop has Windows XP running on it. Here are the specs. Not what you'd find on a typical Windows XP, this was actually a Windows 7 at one point. I've got old software lying around that won't work on modern systems, so this has since become my go-to for that stuff. It's almost exclusively retro gaming related, because you can't use this operating system for much beyond hobbyist purposes anymore. Why? Well, because XP was discontinued in 2014. Software developers no longer support it, so now things are a little sketchy. Google Chrome isn't supported anymore. And good luck with other web browsers, which are at this point vulnerable to nasty viruses. Even when I'd find one that works, websites will most often fail to open, or show up in a broken state. After many frustrations, I came across MyPal, a post-mortem browser designed specifically for Windows XP. For what it is, I'm impressed. I don't plan on doing much with it, but it's great to have some way of accessing the net here. While I can run through a great selection of 90s and 2000s software on this computer, earlier software can struggle a bit. The following is important to know if you want to play DOS games on Windows XP. Earlier Windows operating systems ran MS-DOS 7.1 under the hood, making a majority of its software functional. XP was a complete rewrite based on Windows NT architecture, which removed their DOS foundation. You're able to run some DOS software on XP by the use of its NT Virtual DOS machine, which is limited and runs many games at incorrect speeds. If you're looking to do a lot of DOS-related stuff, XP should not be your go-to system. That being said, there is of course DOSBox, which helps immensely. While I've been able to play many DOS games on their own no problem, a favorite of mine, Scuba Man's Quest, won't even launch without it. One of the cool things you can do on Windows XP is run 16-bit software. This legacy code was dropped in the transition to 64-bit. So long as your XP is 32-bit, as they usually are, then you shouldn't have to worry. I took out the best of Microsoft Entertainment Pack, installed and ran these classics just fine. I was able to do this with the use of a portable diskette drive. Very handy. I tried a few other titles, including the shareware of Doom from this strategy guide. As you can see being run on the NT Virtual DOS machine, the speed is inconsistent. Somehow Duke Nukem games work fine in this environment. All of them, in fact. Well, except for the 2001 prototype. Some games from this time would use 16-bit software to install, even if the game itself was 32-bit. Frustrating for sure. Thankfully, we'll encounter none of those problems here. I've come across some games with limited resolutions that don't fit the screen. I could mess around with my own resolution for better results, but the only games I've got this problem with are old edutainment titles like Gus Goes to Cybertown, and I bet you've never heard of it. We always like to cyber munch! Plays way too fast. Some of this stuff is too ancient or poorly built. Often a mixture of the two. These have been kicking around for years. Welcome to my playhouse! Pluto is a very small, cold planet. Hey, hey stop that! Goodwill Industries is a non-profit social enterprise that provides... Oh, hello, big boxes. Yeah, I don't have many, but all that extra space inside is great for storing related media like patches. More on that in a moment. Big boxes were more of an 80s, 90s thing. Then in the 2000s we got this small box form, which got popular here and... more or less died here. It's nice to see them running in their former glory again. Do keep in mind that, well, much like every era, there's a lot of games that were released in questionable condition. You might have to download patches that should be available on archive sites. Hopefully. House of the Dead made me realize how much more fun it is to play with light guns. Typing of the Dead, now that's more appropriate. I spent an afternoon revisiting some personal favorites of mine, and abominations of mankind. Just taking care of business. I had the idea of installing Steam, but unfortunately it's no longer supported. Which is a shame because of how many great old games could have been downloaded from there. It's gonna be either discs or GOG installers for me. Here's a tip. If you're using disc backups, try installing WinCD Emu. It's the fastest CD mounting tool I've used. You just open a file with it, assign a letter, and bam, behaves just like a real disc. There are a few games that will demand the CD be in the disc tray only, but as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty rare. What about the modern stuff? I've found that, for Windows XP, you're not going to get much compatibility for games released later than 2010. 
The most modern install I've got here is the 2009 HD remaster of Serious Sam. Its speed passes for playability, but this isn't ideal. If you'd like to try some community or indie projects, you'll probably be out of luck unless it's from the time. Most software you'll come across now is designed for 64-bit hardware. It's the norm, and thus a lot of cool stuff like the Super Mario 64 PC port will not work. Now it's time to take a look at emulation. Links to this stuff have been plastered all over the internet in the last 20 years. A lot of domains have expired, so now you'll just have to find one that works. There's a number of arcade emulators that work on XP. I've used MAMEUI32 0.146 for years. I'm not sure how accurate it is overall, but the majority of my selected games ran at full speed without issues. Not Anteater, sadly. For the Atari 2600, I used Z26 4.07. Nothing I played showed any issues. The Intellivision emulator, Nostalgia V4.2, has a low maximum resolution. It's not very sharp. The ColecoVision can be emulated with Colum 5.6. No issues from what I could tell. Altira is capable of running Atari 8-bit computer and 5200 console games, and it does a great job. Virtua NES version 0.93 runs commercial NES games just fine, as far as my testing goes. I tried some ROM hacks and Famiclone dumps, but those were hit and miss. Sega Genesis and its many variations work well in Fusion 3.64. SNES 9X 1.60 does a great job running Super Nintendo games. When it comes to the Sega Saturn, whether it's 2D or 3D games, nothing plays very fast here. Yabose V0.9.14 is more like a proof of concept. Most of you have probably used Project 64 at some point or another for Nintendo 64 emulation. It was hugely popular. This is version 1.6. It's a hit and miss for playability. I can run Super Mario 64 and Smash Brothers flawlessly, but Yoshi's story is a duplicate of the screen popping in and out on the left side. Messing around with the settings and plugins didn't grant much success. But this is still an acceptable emulator that lets you play many Nintendo 64 games at full speed. PCSXR for PS1 games. Found this on the Wayback Machine without much information. Can't find a version number anywhere. All games I tried ran at full speed but had some issues in graphics and sound. Null DC V1.0.4 runs Dreamcast games. This is a very well-optimized emulator that plays many games at full speed. I did notice minor dips in frame rate occasionally for some games, and garbage graphics can appear on surfaces. More common in the system-intensive stuff. <laughs> Visual Boy Advance 1.8.0 Beta 3. Another very popular emulator like Project 64. I've never had any issues with this one personally. Simple and very effective. Here's GameCube. I'm using the last version of Dolphin to work on Windows XP, which is 4.0.2. Yeah, I don't know. I tried a handful of games and most of them run very slow. Are you coming, Sarge? Look, I'm trying my best here, okay? We're on low settings. Intellivision Lives is broken, but I guess you could expect that from an emulator inside an emulator. Wait, I'm curious now, let's try this on PlayStation 2. This is PCSX2 XP, V1.5.0-1, a custom, backported version of the famous PlayStation 2 emulator. Look at that, it runs Intellivision Lives very well, beating the Intellivision emulator we used earlier. Unfortunately, most are very slow. Pretty funny that my PlayStation 2 emulator has become my Intellivision emulator. And here's the last one, Nintendo DS using NoCash GBA version 2.9b. Well, the sound isn't great. Frame rates aren't superb either, but it gets the job done for Windows XP, I guess. I'd suggest going with a smartphone instead so you can use the touchscreen properly. Alright, so after all's said and done, do I suggest you get back into Windows XP for old school PC gaming? First and foremost, I would suggest giving virtual machines a try. If that turns out to be a problem for any reason, an older system could be required. It's best if you already have this stuff kicking around like I did, though. Getting a dedicated computer might be overkill unless you're serious about this. 
I hope this video ignited some of that 2000s PC gaming nostalgia. It's a shame how often great games are forgotten due to lacking modern support. But that's just how things go, I guess. I hope to see a lot more games from this era being brought back to life on current-gen platforms. After all, a lot of this stuff was only ported once. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from me in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time!